This is Monmouth, Illinois. It was here in 1853 that Monmouth College was founded. Franklin Pierce was president of the United States then. Railroads were still a novelty, and beards were most respectable. In 1853, weather providing, the 180-mile trip from Monmouth to Chicago was a four-day affair. But all of that has changed today. Monmouth is just three and one-half hours from Chicago by train or car, and one hour by air. The pioneer tradition of Monmouth College has not been forgotten. Quinby House, traditional home of the president, stands as a monument to these early years. Monmouth College was one of the first institutions in the nation to adopt the three-term, three-course curriculum. This effective academic plan divides the school year into 10-week terms rather than the conventional two 15-week semesters, and it allows maximum concentration in fewer academic subjects. When Fulton Hall, a men's residence, was opened in 1951, Monmouth College participated in only a few off-campus study programs. Today, the college has more than 22 such programs, including the exciting Washington House in Washington, D.C., and the Urban Semester, which provides an opportunity for future educators to teach in the central city of Chicago. At the time of construction of Graham Hall, another men's residence, there were 741 students enrolled from 21 states and five foreign nations. At present, the near 1,400 students are from 33 states and 12 foreign nations. Gibson Hall, opened in the fall of 1965, upset the status quo of men's residence hall construction. This attractive men's dormitory features private room entrances and disregards the old corridor style. McMichael Residence Hall is a favorite of the Monmouth College co-eds. Although the oldest dormitory on campus, its spacious rooms, high ceilings, and ample closets give it a special charm. Each dormitory has its own distinctive personality. The Georgian tradition of Greer and Winbigler Halls is unforgettable. Both are fully carpeted and have beautiful living rooms enjoyed by Monmouth women for the last two decades. Women students were especially pleased in the fall of 1966 when they returned to college to find Cleland Hall for women, a revolutionary concept in dormitory living based on a clever cluster unit plan featuring lounges and bath facilities for each separate living section. Based on the success of Cleland Hall, Leedman Hall, another women's residence, finished in 1968, continued the cluster unit plan. Leedman Hall, also fully carpeted, has a bi-level lounge joining its two wings. The student center, with its dining room, snack bar, bookstore, game room, and student radio station, is the most frequently visited campus building. Every day, it buzzes with activity. And every year, the student center board arranges a great schedule of activities. Plans have been made to add an additional three wings to the three-year-old fraternity complex bringing all fraternities on campus together to share the unique benefits the complex provides. Monmouth has a long history of Greek letter organizations. Pi Beta Phi, the first national sorority in the country, was established in 1867. One year later, the Beta chapter of Pi Beta Phi was begun at Iowa Wesleyan, Mount Pleasant, Iowa. Pi Beta Phi's success was followed by the founding of another national sorority in 1870, Kappa Kappa Gamma. Both sororities have chapters on many college campuses throughout the country. Wallace Hall is the main academic building. For over 60 years, Monmouth students have prepared for the demands of modern society in this building. Constant change marks the academic program of the college, courses in computer research, group psychology, and the Japanese language are just a few of the new educational approaches. The Little Theater, center of Monmouth's active dramatic program, Austin Hall, the music building, and the Arts Center will be consolidated in the new Fine Arts Center to be constructed within the next few years. 
Speakers here in the Monmouth Auditorium in 1967 included Hugo Margain, Mexican ambassador to the United States, Fulton Freeman, United States ambassador to Mexico, and the renowned economist John Kenneth Galbraith. The world of science has changed a bit since the McMichael Science Hall was built in 1909. It was designed the year Henry Ford introduced the first Model T. The building sits as strangely out of date as that ancient four-cylinder automobile. The new Science Center, when completed in the fall of 1970, will provide the most advanced research and teaching facilities in the United States. The fully air-conditioned building will house the college's departments of biology, geology, chemistry, and physics with individual student labs and a technical reference library. Today, the outdated, antiquated library sits overstuffed with nearly 110,000 volumes. Its new replacement will have space for over 300,000 volumes. It will be fully carpeted and air-conditioned, and it will contain seminar areas, 232 study carrels, typing facilities and study rooms for individual faculty members. One neat feature of the new library will be the reading terrace for outdoor study during warm weather. For years, the air at Monmouth College was filled with talk about the new science center and library. Then, just two years ago, the talking stopped and everyone went to work. Friends, alumni, administration, faculty and students began designing a major fundraising campaign. They called the program Impact. The impact of their efforts will never be forgotten. The library will be finished in the fall of 1969, and the Science Center should be ready for occupancy in the fall of 1970. The athletic program at Monmouth College is mighty impressive. The best record in all sports in the history of the school was compiled last year. The skirling of the pipes recalls the early years when the Scottish Presbyterians founded Monmouth College. Since its origin, Monmouth has been pledged to a tradition of progress. The excitement of this progress continues today. The concern of Monmouth College is with the individual student, his mind, his aspirations, and his ideals. Within an intellectual and cultural environment in which Christian ideals are affirmed, the college aims to train highly effective young men and women who will in turn render a service to society. Each year, 500 new students are welcomed, and you too can join this adventure. <laughs>